What's up everybody, Chlorine King here. Thanks for tuning in for another video. We're out here at a client's house and today we're gonna to show you guys how to install a Jandy Hydrocool light. One had burned out at this client's house so we're gonna show you the process for replacing it, the special tool you need and also the different process to install it because it is different than installing a full-size pool light. So we're excited to show you this, so stay tuned. All right, so I got my lead repair tech and buddy here, Ian, and he's gonna help talk about the process for doing this. So Ian, talk about the process for doing this. How does it differ from a full-size pool light? So the difference here is we don't have the light niche to put in the extra wire to keep on the pool side to pull it out to do any work on the pool light. So there is, thankfully at this one, the extra wire over at the junction box. So we can pull it out to see exactly what light it is, uh, what wattage, because there are going to be different wattages for each one of these hydrocools, and they are color-coded via each wattage, and uh, today we'll be showing a couple of the, or one of those in particular. Now, talk about, Ian, if we didn't have the extra wire back there at the junction box, how would you go about uh, replacing this? So, when I run into not having the extra wire in the junction box, I will then cut off a piece of my own wire, a uh, regular 12-gauge wire, uh, wrap it uh, in co bare copper uh, against the bare copper for the exposed wire at the junction box that goes towards the transformer and then that way I have about six to eight feet of extra wire on that side that can then pull underground in case we need to pull out the hydrocool light to see what version it is or to pull it out to connect our existing new pool light. And that's very important guys because there's no slack in the niche like Ian mentioned earlier. Normally a, a, a full-size pool light will have you know five, six feet where you can pull the light on the deck. These hydrocools don't allow that so by him doing that that allows us to work on it and pull the light out and do the things we need to but still be able to retrieve it on the other side because if we pulled six feet of light out here without that slack or that extra wire he puts in then we got to cut the conduit and, and expose, get access to the light there and then reattach the conduit, blah, blah, blah. So next question, Ian, does this require a special tool to get the light installed? So yes, each one of these hydrocools does require a special tool, which I have here in my hand. Uh, every hydrocool light comes with one. So anytime you purchase a new one, this is already existing in the box. But uh, it's nice to keep them around just in case because it is a plastic tool and occasionally the little uh, key pieces will break off if you have one that's a little too tight inside the niche. So don't waste them, keep them. Even if you have five or 10 on your van or repair truck, uh, at least that way you always have some so you can always work on it. So we'll get, go ahead and start showing you the process now. Uh, right now we're gonna have Ian go ahead and start disconnecting the light from the wall. So Ian, if you feel free to walk us through it. Sounds good, yeah. I'm gonna use the key that is supplied with each one of these lights and uh, it's just like any of them, uh, lefty, loosey, righty, tighty uh, for any twist down and uh, usually takes about five or six turns to get it out. Uh, but let's see how easy this one comes out. Yep. See how it locks into the face of the light there and now he's unscrewing it, which is unscrewing the light from the yeah. Just to show really niche. quick if we want to see, there's four little pens here that uh, end up locking in on the sides of the lights. Now, uh, they use plastic, so that way if, if it was metal, it would end up eating up the uh, part, uh, sorry, these, the actual light. So they like to use the plastic to not create any scratches on the light fixture. Which is good because that'll mean less prone to cracking as well. I have seen people use needle nose pliers on these and it definitely eats up the faceplate of the light. There it goes. I was gonna say too, because you can also, when you're twisting it, this thing freaking builds up a lot of tension on the wire. Well, in theory too, that it could create a little vacuum lock in there, and, and the light could get Ooh. suctioned inside the niche as That's well. Smelly. <laughs> so yeah, that water's been sitting in that niche for a little bit, but cool. he's, you can see he's starting to pull it out now. Yeah, I can feel some. Yep, that's exactly what I thought it was. So it's a 24 watt, which is a yellow colored label. So say you're ever looking into them and you can't get them all the way, but you want to match a like for like, you can do it by color coding the labels here. So we have a, a yellow label here. Now also I can get to the serial number first if there's ever a warranty claim needed. But otherwise, if you look a little bit farther down, It'll say 24W or 24 watts on this guy, but this is all color coded by the yellow. I believe the other color is purple. Um, off the top of my head, I don't exactly remember. So there you go, the label tells all. 
So, so now we got now the light I'm out. I'm going to be going over to the junction box to give myself a little bit more wire and figure out exactly which light I'm pulling on now because we have three in this pool. Yep. So let's go check that out. Okay, while well, Ian's over at the light, he is uh, going to tug on these and basically we're going to figure out which one of these three is the light we're trying to replace. Can you see that? Pull it again. Yep, got it. So as we can see here, it's this middle light here that is actually the one we're going to be replacing. All right, so what Ian just did now is disconnected power from these lights, so that way there's nothing going through the transformer, and as we unplug these, we don't get shocked or any of that fun stuff. Yes. 12 volts still sucks getting shocked from. Yes, no, no electricity is better. Yeah, we've so. both been zapped before. It's not fun. So yes, uh, trial by error. So what we're going to do is leave everybody to the side here now, and thankfully, as you guys see, they left plenty of extra wire on this side to where I can pull it out and connect my new light wire to the old light. Because what I like to do is I connect to the existing wire here with the new light and then pull it through in place of the old wire. Normally they don't do this. This is very uncommon to have this much slack. Yeah, normally I'll have about this much to work with. So at that point I would custom cut another piece of wire to give myself this extra bit. Yep. And another way, especially when I'm working by myself, is I will end up tying this end to something to make sure that I don't lose it into the conduit and then have to use a fish tape later on and just create a little bit more hassle for myself. So that's working smarter than harder so he's not pulling it through no matter what because it's tied off to something. Smart move. So there we go there. So he just tied this conduit so he can't accidentally pull it now into uh, this middle conduit yeah, slot so here. Just in case it gives me a little bit of an extra spot here. I'm going to give myself a little bit more. All right. So now I'm going to go pull the rest of this out so I can connect to the new light. Now that we had enough wire over there and I made sure to tie it up so I don't pull too much wire, I've been able to pull enough wire out to where I can cut off the old light that's broken and then I can strip this down and connect the new light wire to this. So the other one that I'm going to end up doing is making sure that I don't have too much wire over here to pull underground. So just more work for myself if I leave all of the existing wire here instead of customizing it to the proper size. So Ian, would you say from here on out it's basically the same thing as a full-size pool light as far as pulling it through and wiring it up kind of thing? Yes, I would completely say so. The only difference is at the end, you're not going to be leaving any extra wire inside the niche because, well, you can't do it over here. So then we leave it over at the junction box uh, as much as you can inside the existing junction box that you do have. Then, of course, the only, the only other difference outside of that, of course, is how you secure the light to the wall, which, again, we use that tool to screw into the niche versus a full-size light you're locking the under tab in on the underside of the light and then screwing it in the top with a one single screw. So a little different. So I'm going to actually get a close up of Ian doing this. I know that uh, in the other light video, uh, Jason showed you how to do this, but yeah. he's going to go ahead and start cutting this up so we can start prepping it to connect to the new light and make sure that we don't lose it underground. So you see he's splicing the SO cable to get access to the wires in there. We're going to do the same thing with the end of the new light and then uh, braid it all together, tape it up very well with electrical tape and that will allow us to pull with confidence that we're not going to lose it underground. This light's fairly old. It's nice and stiff. That's another point Ian just brought up. You can basically, you can really tell how old a light is, I mean, you can't put years on it, but you can tell if it's an older, newer light based on how, it's, um, how stiff the outside conduit ends up being with yep. the wire. So, it didn't do as much as I thought it was going to do. Go back in. Might be time to sharpen my knife. Yeah, we. <laughs> We've we, seen a few lights with these. <laughs> yeah, we replaced uh, lots of lights over time and installed them, so I mean. That knife's been put to good use. Yeah, you gave me that knife, what, five years ago? Yeah, and it's still in use. He hasn't lost it yet. <laughs> <laughs> he says that, and I'm going to lose it next week. Yeah, that's always how it works, right? And I like to expose about six to eight inches of wire on each side. So on our old light fixture, go about there. And then on the new light, we're still going to also have about that same. Yep. 
So we're going we're gonna to open up the new one and start the same process with the old light. All right, so just figured I'd show that uh, the key comes in here with a couple little just different colored to, uh, face plates to match. Those are just the completely open face plates for the lights, but there also are ones that you can angle the light down, either less or more. So it has a few different options if you want to customize where the light is being uh, shown towards in the pool. And it's cool they added different colors, so uh, for different colored surfaces, if you want a specific look for the light, which is pretty neat. Okay, so now that I've gotten the copper wire stripped here, what I end up doing is I will get rid of the extra conduit sorry, rubber here on that. And we're going to then be twisting each of these wires together to give it a little bit better strength. So Ian, I noticed that there's only two wires here instead of three like a typical pool light. Why is that? It's because everything ends up being plastic. We don't have a metal niche. We also don't have a metal junction box. So we don't need to ground any of this out. There you go. So that's why in these hydro cools you'll find uh, only two wires instead of three. So don't be surprised. And think they gave you bad lights, that's how they're made. So once he gets done wiring, uh, twisting all that up, we're going to cover it pretty heavily in electrical tape to just help solidify the connections and make sure that uh, as we pull this we aren't going to lose it underground like I mentioned before. Yes, because that's not fun. No. Thankfully there are other options. You can use fish tape to get through there if there is no breaks in the underground conduit, but you never know as you get into those older pools how hard somebody tamped down the ground to get either a new deck on and uh, sometimes they crush the conduits. Yeah, in fact, we're very apprehensive working on uh, pool lights or replacing pool lights where the pavers are sunk or the cantilever concrete decks are cracked and sinking and all that because it's a very good probability that the deck has, has crushed the conduit underground and you're not budging it. Um, remember that pool out in Treasure Island, don't mention the name, but we couldn't even get the light to budge because it was just stuck so bad in the decking. Oh yeah, no, I've, I've seen some other pool guys that actually end up pulling their trucks up if they can get their truck there to try and pull the light and they still can't get it. So it's a, sometimes there's just a, something in the way, unfortunately, when you get underground without c completely digging it up at that point. And that's also why it's very important to have a good contingency disclaimer when you're sending out these light estimates because, I mean, we're not going to be responsible for some damage that's underground that we can't see. Uh, so it's very important to make sure that you're covered in that aspect because, it's, you know, at that point, if it's stuck that bad, like what Ian was just saying, even not even able to get it out of the truck, at that point you're having to dig up the, the decking to see where the issue is and fix it from there, which isn't uh, included in the price of a regular light replacement, right Ian? Yes, uh, at that point you probably end up uh, coming out of your own pocket a little bit. So sometimes just letting the customer know that there are contingencies going into these light fixtures because well, you just don't know what's underground really goes a long way when you do run into something, which I'd say it's probably a good 40 to 50% chance if the pool is older than 10 years old. I mean, how many, now Ian's been my repair tech for just shy of four years, super proud of him. He's been doing great. How many lights do you think we've uh, replaced over those years? Uh, rough estimate, we're somewhere around 100. So I mean, we have a pretty good uh, database to pull that 40 or 50 percent number out. We're not just making that up for the sake of making it up. I mean, there's... The newer the pool, the better the chances are it's going to be a nice smooth pull. I've had some that are 10 feet long that give me, uh, I don't know, a 45 minute struggle, but I've also had ones that are 150 feet that I can do by myself in a matter of 10 minutes. So, so it really hoping, depends on what's underground. Yeah, we're hoping this is one of them. So what are we going to do now, Ian? So next, now that I've got this all connected, I'm going to end up laying out the wires smoothly as I can so that it can just guide into this light niche nice and easily. Now, pool light installs are so much easier when you have two people because you can have somebody guide the wire into the niche on this side while the other person tugs. But my way of working around that, if it's by yourself, is you, you start tugging over at the junction box until you start to get a snag and you come back over, see what you got over here, kind of feed a little bit more by yourself into the light niche and then just keep going from there. It's a little bit of a back and forth effort. Might take a little longer, but it's definitely doable by yourself. So Ian, are you expecting me to work? Is that what you're wanting me to do today? It might help a little. <laughs> All right, I guess I'll help him out. So 
Uh, do you want to tug or you want me to? Uh, I can tug. Okay. So uh, we'll go ahead and get the process started and go from there. All right, guys, I'm over here at the junction box now. Uh, we got the light fixture uh, connected to the old light wire. So at this point, we're going to be pulling over here until we have the rest of that light wire completely tugged to this side, and then I will cut it to fit inside the junction box with some extra. But we'll get to that when I get there. And then I'm over at the so, cool light. As of right uh, now, as you can see, it's going very easily. Thankfully, whoever did this conduit, they used a little extra large size conduit and it seems to have a nice smooth pull directly from the pool. So sometimes I'll just wrap it around my hand to give it because it gets a little wet and slippery. Are we good over there Eric? And yeah I'm good. Eric's helping out quite a bit to make my day a little easier. You're good. And now see, getting a little bit of a stop. So at that point, if it was me, I would go over here just by myself and check it out. We good? Yep. Okay. So Eric's thankfully helping, and now I am going back to tugging. So you can see now that it's getting clumped up as he's pulling more. This is why it's always helpful to have a second person doing the light. And a quick tip, you know, to eliminate pushing uh, rotational torque on the SO cable and the wires on the inside, as you get closer to getting this put in, start rotating it to the left since we're doing righty tighty. So that way, as we tighten it to the right, we're limiting the rotational torque we're putting on the lighting SO cable and wires inside to help protect it. We're just going to continue to keep going. We're getting near the end. All right, Ian, slow up real quick. How are we doing over there? We got a couple feet. A couple feet, perfect. All right, so I'm turning the light to the left now to help with this. Two more feet. We're close. All right, stop. Good? Yeah, stop. Yeah, we're good. All right. Well, I didn't even think about you being in a long sleeve. Ah, refreshing, right? Yeah. All right, so now that we got the light in, we're gonna use our tool here and just screw the light in. And like I said, I preloaded the rotational torque the opposite way. So as we tighten this, we're not putting rotational torque inside the conduit for this light. So you just gotta snug it down. You don't need to crank it. It's nice and finger tight, so we're good to go now. So now at this point, we're going to head to the uh, junction box and get that all wired up. Hey guys, now that we ended up pulling the light wire from the pool itself over to the junction box, what I did was I custom cut this to make sure it matches the other three or the other two lights. So that way I can just wire everything together and make sure that it has connection to the power as well over here. So we're going to match like for like colors, black on black here for the three lights and then also black coming from our power source. If you look closely, you'll see the green they ran in here is just capped off because it's not needed. Yes. For this type of light. But thankfully they left it there in case it is needed. Yeah, for whatever else down the road. So, so, yeah. so what are some tips for doing this, Ian? I know one thing we like to do is make sure that there's no exposed copper hanging out of the underside of the wing nut once we're done making up the connection. Yeah, so I like to leave about a, a quarter inch to a half inch of exposed uh, wire when I use stranded uh, anytime I'm doing a wire nut connection. And at that point, I will then twist this down 
and as it's twisting down you'll watch the insulation kind of twist around almost braid that's telling me that it's caught up on top in the copper and then I will also just double check make sure to check each individual wire and see if anybody's loose and then start over if they are but thankfully everybody's nice and tight and snug there so now next we're gonna go over to our white get the whites from the three lights and then we get our white from the power source at the transformer and I will then use another wire nut to get these all connected it's always good to double and triple check your work, especially with electrical. And if you are doing this yourself, you want to make sure after you pull a light, like you saw my arms are completely submerged in the water, you don't want to immediately come over here and start messing with electrical. Dry your hands off and uh, make sure they're nice and dry before you start messing with electrical because water and electrical, of course, don't mix. And again, just double checking, making sure I tighten them up real good. We're nice and solid. So next step is getting some zip ties and getting this nice and tidy to put back into the junction box. So I'm going to go grab some zip ties and we'll get this tightened up. But before I get this closed up, I'm actually just going to double check and make sure that all the lights are working and they're in sync. So we're going to turn power back on to the lights and uh, go over to the pool and see if they're on. All right, let's go check. Oh, this view really sucks, by the way. I don't know how this homeowner lives with himself. Okay, and so now when we're doing these RGB lights, RGDW lights, you have to sync them up. So as you can see here, we have white on the new light that we just put in. But over here, we have green on the existing light that was already here. So what I do in order to sync these things up is I will turn off the breaker and leave it off for about two to five minutes to give a reset on the computer system inside these automations. Now, if you don't have automation, just disconnecting power to the transformer will end up doing this as well. Is it still, still same time frame, two to five minutes? Yes, two okay. to five minutes is what I like to do on any of these resets just to give a kind of a hard reboot on any computer chips inside. Okay, so now that we know the lights are working, Ian's gonna go make up that box, tidy up the electrical, and also cut the breaker off to let the time reset so we can get these things synced up. So Ian's running out to the van to get the zip ties. We can see how much excess cable we have here. Typically, we like to save this in case we need to uh, use it to make up to pull new lights through. So we generally keep a good 50 feet of this SO cable from the lights uh, on, on hand at any time. All right, guys, so I'm just over here cleaning up the wiring here with some zip ties. Uh, you know, you could push it back in and no one would know the difference, but that's uh, what we like to do is be that extra difference here and uh, a little bit more professional that way. If somebody else opens this up, they, uh, they like to see something nice and tidy. Not necessarily the customer, but hopefully the next contractor, if it's not us. That's the first thing we noticed, like, wow, they actually wrapped it up and did it nice. Yeah, the little things that we see like that that impress us, we hope they're going to impress the next guy as well for us. So once that's so. done, he's going to put it in the box, get it all fit in there all nice, and then he's going to just reattach the faceplate, and this portion's done. So yeah. at we'll that point, we just need to wait for the two to five minutes to pass to let the lights sync up. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, stop here and then show you the lights as they synced up. All right, guys, so now you can see the lights are synced up and good to go. So uh, good job here. We're about done. We just need to pack up and be on our way. All right, everybody, so that is how you install a Jani Hydrocool light and sync the lights up. So hopefully you guys learned a little bit. Uh, thanks to Ian for the help today with making this video possible. Uh, stay tuned for more videos, like and subscribe, and we'll see you next video. Have a great day.